Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate demo for the piece I call The Radioactive Man. Now the last video was about a character design series I have called A Village Corrupted. Uh, this video uh, is about a character design series that I just call the Monster Character Design Series. Uh, really the premise here is to try and take these like old tried and true monsters and see if I can re-envision them in some interesting way. Uh, for instance, here we've got like an undead guy, a ghost, a monster hunter, a chud, uh, we have a chupacabra and like a classic robot and some uh, big feet and all those types of things. Big foots? Big feet? Anyways, um, so for this one I wanted to keep with that theme of sort of these classic ideas and I went with sort of sci-fi scientist who has had an accident gone wrong, go with the whole re radioactive vibe because that kind of fits uh, that particular era, but then try to re-envision it in a way that had some like humor and fun and like a bit of a modern vibe to it. So let's go ahead and jump in to the actual process of this one. Now you'll notice here at the beginning of the character design process, I just lay down sort of the physique of a character that I think could be fun. Uh, but then from there, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. And you're going to see me noodle with the idea of like a uh, creature from the Black Lagoon type vibe. Uh, I end up not going that route, as you know, but I do on the next character from the series uh, that we'll, I'll be doing a video for eventually soon. I actually make this radioactive guy. He's got a friend who is based on sort of the um, horror at Party Beach type sea creature. But you can see here I'm trying about out a bunch of stuff. I'm not really liking it. And then I'm like, oh, what if I go with something that's like skeletal? I didn't want to do anything that was too much like Larry, the first character from the series, where he's got some exposed bone parts, but he's basically undead. And I wanted to go with more of this like see-through radioactive dude where you can see his skeleton, but that's not actually his form. His skeleton is like kind of floating inside, kind of like all, all of our skeletons already are, I suppose. Now, the premise of this, which is the premise of all of these, is I'm trying to embrace certain tropes and then reinvent other aspects of that trope, uh, at least as much as possible. So what you see here is leaning into some imagery from the 50s and 60s with sci-fi stuff, but then throwing in kind of like something that I think is maybe like fun or funny. Oh, you just see me write, oof, let's go for it. Um, that's because the process that I use when I'm working in Procreate is actually pretty cumbersome when you're dealing with layers of transparent objects. Now I'll throw a playlist together of all of the monster characters so that you can click that down below in the description if you want to see me go in depth on the explanation of how I paint these. I'm going to explain it a little bit, but I'm going to explain it through the lens of trying to do this transparency stuff. So from here on out, I'm going to assume you've watched at least like the Larry one so that you understand how all of these are set up. Because in trying to set up a consistent look and feel for all of these characters, I also have a consistent process that I go through, certain colors that I pick, etc, etc. So go ahead and watch that and then that will hopefully help you uh, with grasping the challenge that I'm facing here in this one. So you can see here I'm trying to lay down like a stylized skeleton. It's going okay. You'll see I, I kind of do this multiple times, but the point here is not actually my terrible skeletal anatomy that I'm doing here, uh, which eventually I do work out right. Um, but it's more dealing with the select paint, select clear process and how I do it with transparencies. I've discussed this on a couple of other characters before, like the slime, uh, character, the the blob character, or like I did like this jelly girl like a long time ago. Um, so th with this character, the idea was though I had a significant number of objects floating within this transparent mass, uh, which in this case is his his skeletal system. And then I event I knew that I eventually wanted to get like a glowy source in his chest. So that meant that I had to basically differentiate between there's some amount of mass behind his skeleton, which is like his back muscles and back of his arms and all that kind of stuff. There's like the skeletal system, then in the middle of 
the ribs and the spine and stuff, I'm going to have like a glowy element. And then on top of that skeletal system, on top meaning and if we're thinking of layers or we're thinking of uh, Z-depth with regards to a canvas, uh, then there's the meat, the pink meat um, on the close side of his skeleton. And then when you, you complicate that even further by having like his fist raised like that, so we've got this foreshortened aspect. So how do we handle this? You can see as I've been talking how I'm trying to set up all of these layers. So we've got like a backing pink layer that's kind of like a majority of his silhouette, but that arm that is his right arm, to us it's the left side, but it's his right arm, that has to also interact with these layers of transparency. So I have the arm set up as its own sort of like set or grouping of layers, and then we've got like his body, and then we've got his forearm, then we've got his hand, and then we've got the stuff that's just like fully opaque and isn't really a part of this, like his shorts and his hair. Now his shorts do go around the back of his leg, but you get the point of what I'm trying to get to. The shorts and the hair are the easiest part of this entire thing. Here I am redoing the skeleton for like the billionth time. Anyways, ignore that. Well, don't ignore it. You can watch it, but that's not what I'm going to keep explaining. So with each one of those groupings that we've got, we have that let's call it backing that back meat that sounds gross but anyways that back meat then we've got the bones and then we've got the front meat and if those things overlap like in the case of the uh arm to forearm to hand which is his left arm and hand uh we have those several times over that happens multiple times the reason why we have that is of course we want to make sure that we are showing that compounding of transparent stuff. I want, if he were to sort of hold his hand up in front of his face, I want to see all those pink layers get thicker and denser and it's harder to see through. And then the parts that have uh, less overlap, you can see through really clearly. It's actually pretty easy to replicate that in Photoshop because we can use our transparency, the opacity of each layer, and we can just build up all of those layers, adjust all those transparencies, and then like, there it is, right? Thing is, right now we're talking about the flats, we're not talking about the rendering. What perfect yet accidental timing, here's where the rendering starts. Now, you'll see me turn certain layers trans more transparent or less transparent when they're the same, like the bones. That's just me trying to sort out uh, what layers are what at this point. Uh, again, I'm not going to explain select paint, select clear. Please refresh yourself on that if you want to really understand what's going on here. That link is down below. Um, you can see me right now trying to establish a bunch of transparent uh, sort of like qualities, I guess. I'm trying to establish the fact that as that form turns like around his uh, lats or around his arm, like his deltoid, around his neck, or around his trapezius, that it gets more dense as it's going around that surface. Uh, what you just see, saw me do really quickly there was a proof of concept. I wanted to make sure that I was going in the right way. So I did a bunch of like duplicating and blurring and all that kind of stuff just to prove out my point or prove out my thesis. And now I'm going to start executing against that thesis. And what is that thesis? Well, with Select Paint, Select Clear, you have this kind of like master or series of master shadow layers that sit at the top of everything. Well, we can't really do that here because for instance, these scapulas that you see right here, those are in the body. So if we were going to do the shadow for those, and then we were going to keep those shadow layers on top of everything, by the time we're clearing away sort of like the front meat colors and all our layers and all that kind of stuff, we're going to start eliminating that shadow. And we don't want to eliminate the shadow. That shadow has to sit on the form floating in this mass kind of. And you can also start seeing a little bit of how I have my layers broken up here because we've got um, what's being worked on at the same time. So like that back arm and like that spine and stuff all being kind of part of the same layer system. And then we go to like back side of the ribs, front side of the ribs, all very stylized. Please don't follow my skeletal anatomy if you're taking an exam anytime soon. Uh, part of it is a mix of just a little accurate, a little not accurate. So what we're doing here is we're going through those bone layers and we're rendering those bone layers essentially as if they were on their own they're not floating in this like this body this pink body stuff 
Uh, we're just rendering them as if they are uh, on their own and they're part of their own layer structure, similar to when I paint a whole piece and we've got all these flats and then at the top we've got like shadows and highlights and all that kind of stuff. That said, I have noise that I'm trying to maintain as well. Or I should say we have noise control that I have to maintain. I'm trying to make sure that even though I'm doing all these crazy bones and stuff and I've got the glow in there and I've got shadow and rendering and like all this kind of shit, that I'm not also making it so noisy that you can't tell what I'm trying to do. So right now I'm going through that form shadow pass on the bones and I'm just trying to make sure that the bones are all where I want them to be. And each one of those bone systems, let's call it, I guess, well, no, let's not call it bone, bone sets. Um, those are all getting their own shadow layers so that I can maintain all of that layering that, we, that we're going to need in order to pull off the transparency thing. So for instance, the ribs have their own shadow layers and then there's like a flat layer that is his like forearm bones, his radial and ulna, and those have shadow on them. And then, the, so it's like a bunch of multiple sets as opposed to a big chunk of flats and then one set of shadow layers. We're having to do this in lots of like sort of mini sets. Now, why am I doing it exactly this way? Uh, just because it's what I'm comfortable doing. If you have a different way that you think is gonna work better for you, or you would like to try a different way or do whatever, like totally fine, right? Um, like the painters, you know, 200 years ago, they weren't going through with all these like layer sets. They were having to just figure this all out and paint it all in one big thing, right? So it's not like that's impossible. Of course you can do that. Um, but for me, I wanna kinda like utilize some of the benefits of the digital technology here and use these multiple layers to see if I can build this up and try to get all of that depth using those techniques instead of just flat out trying to uh, paint the whole thing uh, in one go or in one layer, I guess. So we're at the point now where I am continuing to make sure that I'm refining all these things. I believe that skull is pretty far up in the layer stack. So that's why we're like getting to the skull now. And so what you're gonna see is I'm gonna continue to work on the form shadow pass on multiple layers across these multiple bone sets so that I can get all of the layering in, which is what you see right there. Now everything's turned back on and I'm turning on all the layers to kind of see how that form shadow is working with all of the layers turned on. Also, sometimes I'll turn all the layers on just to kind of like save out a stage. Maybe I'll shoot it over to a friend or something and say like, hey, is this working? Like that type of thing, get some feedback on it. As everything is starting to get stood up, I'm also reevaluating all the time, right? Like, is this working? Is there anything I need to tweak? Right now, I was just tweaking the shorts a little bit. And now you see me going through and turning off a ton of stuff. Why am I turning all that off? Well, because I'm going to start working now on the form of the pink stuff, which you see right there. So I'm turning off, I'm going to, as time goes on throughout this piece, be turning off all of the bones and stuff. And what I'm doing is I'm applying the form shadow pass onto the pink casing around everything. So we're painting the arm, uh, I mean it's stylized, but we're painting it as if we're not seeing through it. We're just going to paint its form, we're going to get it all, all the anatomy the way we want it to be, uh, and just kind of establish it like we're like it's not transparent. Because what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to leave that shadow layer on and then adjust the pink flat that's underneath it to be a little bit more transparent. And then that shadow layer, because it's set to multiply, will still impact everything underneath the way we want it to. It's reactive, right? And then that way we can do all this transparency. So what I just did here now is I turned off all those bones. I left the hand on just so that I could still see kind of like where that was landing and everything. And then I quickly with my brush just went in and went bleh and like put all that anatomy down. I adjusted a little bit of the anatomy from the original drawing as well um, just to kind of get it to like fit more of what I'm doing right here. It's not all perfect, but I'll be massaging it as time goes on. But I just kind of wanted to lay it all out so that I felt like I knew where everything was. So we're smudging in. Uh, with the smudge tool, we, we, we went in with the paintbrush and we just kind of went blue, 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 and put it all in really heavy. And now we're going in with the smudge tool and shoving it all around and kind of rounding it off and thinning it out in certain spots. Uh, and then also like erasing in spots to get the nice soft form turn in some spots and then the hard stop in other areas. So this process now is just going to be me continuing to treat his his uh the the pink casing like it is just skin like he's just a normal person and i'm just rendering normal skin from a shadow perspective 
Here I'm, I'm testing it every now and then, turning on some of the uh, shadows, or excuse me, turning on some of the bones, turning on the backing so that I can see how that's all playing together. I turned on the skull for a second just to make sure that I was rendering that general head casing appropriately around the skull. Uh, and some of the stuff that I'm doing here, I'm trying to be accurate and detailed, uh, but I'm also trying to make sure that I again don't add too much noise to the whole thing so i don't do a whole lot with like the face even though the face would probably have a lot of deformations to go around like the skull or maybe it could i don't know this whole thing is theoretical i try to keep that down because i don't want to make it super noisy uh and also i'm having to stay true to my bones more so than you would if you weren't exposing the skeleton now again this is not an anatomy study this isn't like textbook anatomy happening here there's lots of expressive shit going on and it's not super accurate but like for instance that little bump where his collarbone is i actually have to make sure that lines up with the collarbone that's actually going to be exposed so there's things like that or like the finger bones for instance i have to make sure the knuckles and the finger definition on the pink casing actually lines up with the bones underneath so that part's a little tricky luckily it's all very stylized so we can like fudge it a little we're not having to do like a schematic here uh but it's still something that has to be considered you'll also notice that while i was talking i did the form shadow pass on the shorts doing the form shadow pass on the hair right now. Uh, the idea behind this character was that he's kind of like a hunk and he was out running and just being fit and uh, had a radioactive accident. Um, and that's how he got the way he is. So that's why he's got like the dolphin shorts on. He's a bit of a fitness buff. Okay, now we're doing the cast shadows. So I'm not going to have any of the pink cast a shadow on the skull on the skeleton because it just wouldn't instead what we're going to do is we're going to use the quote-unquote atmosphere of that pink casing uh to show that it's like within there but it wouldn't be casting a shadow it would be affecting it by like color and the light passing through it and how it interacts so what we do is we're going to have all the bones cast shadows on the bones and then we're going to have the pink cast shadow on the pink uh and then the shorts would cast shadow on both and same thing with the toupee hair situation so that's the logic that we're going to follow in order to try and also make sure that we're not like overburdening this with tons of different lighting chaos that could possibly happen here now if you're familiar with select paint select clear you're probably thinking to yourself right now well that process is to reduce layer counts for procreate and this character is now having a ton of layers because we're having to do all of these different groups um what's the deal with that and the answer is yeah actually that that's why this piece is a bit of a pain in the butt uh you can't use a lot of the tricks that you would use in photoshop to do some of this stuff uh you don't have unlimited layer counts you can't use smart objects to go like within the the shapes maybe and save them out in some way um so it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a balancing act uh trying to get this to work uh as you go you try to identify things that you're not worried about kind of like losing the flexibility on and you duplicate your file and in that new file you start merging a couple of things so while at this point i'm trying to keep things as separate as possible i am going to hit a point where i'm going to have to start merging stuff Luckily, the character design for this guy, he's not covered in tons of like little things. He doesn't have a lot of individual flats. He's if he if he were normal, he'd be just like a dude with some shorts on. So we get to leverage that simple clear character design to harvest more layers out of the entire thing or to leave room for more layers. Uh that doesn't mean that we don't uh eventually still hit that limit and have to do something with it, but at least it's much more manageable than if this character were a highly detailed, uh, very, very adorned character. Most of Village Corrupted characters, you wouldn't be able to get away with a fully transparent character because they just have too much shit going on. Those characters are also uh, simply lit, though, as well. So you can see now we've got cast shadows on all the bones. You can see where like the shorts are casting shadows onto the bones. The shorts are also casting shadow onto the uh, body of the the pink casing as with other monster character design series characters uh we are doing the form shadow pass the cast shadow pass and then we're doing sort of like a rounding shadow where we're going through and we're adding some extra soft support here and there 
you can see me toggling a bunch of stuff on and off. I can't tell you exactly why I was in that case, but it's probably because I'm starting to merge things because I want to, to force that depth inside the casing, I want to actually merge some things together and blur them, some of the some of the bones, so that we can make it feel like there is more density to that casing and it's not like a perfectly transparent uh, casing. I keep using that word. He's a sausage. Um, so that's that's kind of what you're seeing there is I've, I'm probably on my fifth uh, version of this file at this point and I'm taking those shapes uh, those, those skeleton shapes and I'm merging the shadows into the flats and then I'm blurring that new layer a little bit in order to get that depth. Now uh, you'll notice I did not put highlights on the bones but I am putting highlights on the pink and that's because I didn't want to again bring all that noise. I don't know that you would necessarily get highlights on those bones because they're fairly matte and on top of that they're within this casing so just kind of trying to trying to see what kind of realism I can add to that. You can see I've got some bounce light from the green glow. The green glow is turned off right now, but I painted that into the bones. Lots of toggling happening at this point because I'm trying to figure out all my little pieces. You can see I've got that like arm situation there where the arm flat uh, exists in a certain way behind the body and I'm trying to navigate how I'm like clearing some of those shadow colors. We're trying to also leverage the fact that we have this casing body. So you can see here I'm testing out some of the color and how I'm going to want that to look. Uh, and then I start smudging it in and getting it where I want it to be. Because putting that nice shine over it is really also going to help sell that depth. If you think about those like toys people sell where you get, they're like a clear casing and then you can see the innards, um, that, that clear shine that's happening makes your brain go like, oh, there is definitely something over this thing that's, that's inside. At this point, I know that I have the gist of this character all laid out and painted and all that. Um, I need to start, A, putting in all of the things that the other monster characters have, like this rim light that comes from that light up top. There's going to be a rim light that comes from the bottom as well. That's just the way all of these are set up, the atmosphere and the kind of like sci-fi, uh, like spooky, ooky, but like neon and uh, uh, vapor wavy, or not vapor wavy, more synth wavy kind of vibe of all these characters. Uh, so I need to get all those in there, but I also need to do a lot of balancing just to make sure that my readability is good. So even though I've merged some layers here and there, I can also do some other things still to try and get the readability clear. I can take some of the unmerged shadow layers and I can lower their opacity or darken them. I can also make the 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 meat that's closest to us. Remember I mentioned that's like back meat, bone, and then front meat kind of thing. I can make the front meat uh, more opaque and then that actually reduces some of the noise that's happening in the bones but of course you know we also don't want to hide the bones too much because that's the whole point of this character so we've got this green glow now coming up from the bottom and what i'm doing is i'm basically just applying that to the pink casing i'm essentially going with a premise here where a lot of the light's not getting into the bones uh, but the shadow is still there so that we can get some definition around them and that seems like a good way to keep this from getting too like insanely noisy all of these characters are really colorful, but since he's just like a big shock of pink, I wanted to go with this like muted background, but then it just started to look like it was kind of like unfinished. So I amp it up just a little bit, get into this like purple realm so that it feels like analogous and it keeps the green and the yellow of the hair is kind of like these standout elements. It brings a lot of that attention up to the head, especially with the rim light on the back of his neck. And then we have this little bit of sort of like radioactive debris around him and the character is done. Years ago, I tried to teach some of my painting methods to some other artists that I worked with, and they were very frustrated with some of the uh, kind of like keeping track of layers and all that kind of stuff. And I totally understand why um, I am the opposite, where like when things start getting merged together, I start getting anxiety. And you can definitely see that in a piece like this, where we're having to manage all of these layers, it can certainly become like a lot to keep track of. So I just wanted to talk through this piece because it has it exhibits a lot of the complications of this style uh, so that you can like see where it, it works and where it gets harder. I wouldn't say that it doesn't work because obviously it did work and I got the thing done and if you're working in something like Photoshop it's even easier to do uh, but I just kind of wanted to highlight that like when you get into one of these really really tricky spaces where you have to manage all of this stuff it can be really cumbersome if you're not used to it. 
So I hope you enjoyed watching this video in the process on this character. If you did, please consider hitting like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.